Okay, we're going to take a quick look at the back of these just because the hookups are a little bit different. Uh, this, by the way, is our Lucas alternator that came off the car. And then next to it, we've got our Delco alternator. This is a GM unit. And you could look at, you know, like a late 70s, early 80s Chevrolet. It'll, it'll have an alternator a lot like that. Where you get the differences is this back part can actually be detached and you can rotate it. So if you've got a fitment issue, uh, you can have the connections on, on any of the four sides. Other than that, they're basically very much the same alternator. Uh, so you don't really have to worry too much about the unit itself. And sometimes you can even find them with instructions on how to change that. You can undo these bolts, uh, rotate the housing, put it back on, and it will be just fine. So let's put the Delco alternator in the car. And then if we've got time in this video, I'll show you how to fix this one. Uh, if we don't have time, I'm going to make another video discussing alternators a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, so subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and you'll, you'll see that as it comes up. Okay, now with your attention on the bottom of the alternators, this is the bolt that goes through it. Okay, and there is a mounting bracket on the engine that will fit between here and here. And that is how this alternator connects. So it's important that you've got these spacers in here because it is going to connect to the engine and be held on right at this point. So the front of the alternator, the pulley, has to be in line with the other pulleys. Well, the only way you can do that is to have the correct amount of space just so that the alternator is not too far forward or too far back. The mounting point has to be right here. Pulley has to be so far in front of the mounting point. The same is going to be true with this. And so because you can see this gets a bit closer to the fan up front, uh, with a Delco alternator, you are going to have to modify it a little bit. After you get it from the store, you're going to have to file this down a bit. I got this off another car, so it's actually a little bit unclean, but you get the idea. If you buy a Delco alternator, it's going to have a, a little bit more sticking out of here. Uh, at the back, you're going to have a little, uh, probably another half a, half a centimeter, quarter inch maybe. Uh, don't know exactly. I've already sanded it off, but you're going to want to get a metal file and just trim it down until this is the same distance as this. Okay, so if you have an old alternator on the car, you can do that. If you don't have an alternator, if it's missing, uh, then just keep shaving a little bit off at a time until the pulleys all line up and then you're in good shape. Uh, another issue that you can have is the size of the bolt hole. And so probably about time I can take this off. Let's get this guy out of the way. Keep all the pieces together. So as this bolt goes through, you'll notice this is not a fantastic fit here. Two options. Uh, option number one is you can enlarge the hole that goes through the mount. I don't like doing that because mounts are a little bit difficult to find. Option number two is inside the alternator, uh, you can put, uh, you can go to a hardware store and you can find a bushing. Basically it's, uh, well, almost a lot like this, right? You want something like this that is wide enough to fit around the bolt and narrow enough to fit inside the alternator. So if you've got a sloppy fit, uh, look for something like that. Otherwise, you can make it work. If it's an emergency or just trying to get the car on the road, you can make it work. But what will eventually happen is you're going to oval out this hole and the alternator is going to go out of adjustment. And so uh, be, be aware that that could happen. I know that in some cases uh, you can get, uh, not in some cases, I guess you could do this, but you could put some tape and wrap that around the bolt and just continue to wrap a little bit more and a little bit more until it just fits in. It's a snug fit. That will work. Uh, I don't know about that long term because uh, tape is something that's prone to just wearing away. So uh, a lot of vibration going on. Uh, there's heat uh, that could affect it and so eventually that may be something that's not going to fit as well. The best way to do it is to get a bushing or to get a larger bolt uh, but since we already have a bolt and, it, and we know that we don't have to modify the hard to find part on the engine probably the better way is to get a bushing of some kind or even just wrap some tape around here so that it fits and it's a little bit more snug through here. Uh, so that's really all you're going to need to do on the alternator and then we can get this set up on the car. Okay, we've got the mount right here. We've got our bolt going through the alternator. And maybe I shouldn't have put the bolt.
hole through the alternator yet until I kind of got it fitted. There we go. Okay, now first thing you want to do, make sure that the pulleys line up close. Uh, another thing that you're going to have to adjust, by the way, this bracket isn't necessarily going to fit, but we'll address that in a moment. First, let's put our nut on the bottom mount so that our alternator does not fall off. Of course, the beautiful part about these Delco alternators, if you've got one of these on your car, is that you can go to any AutoZone when it breaks and get another, well, assuming you bought it from AutoZone, but you can go to any auto parts store where you bought it and they almost always come with like a lifetime warranty. You just go get another one. Really inconvenient, but it's cheap. They're easy to find, and you don't have to wait for the parts to be shipped to you like you would with a Lucas alternator. All right, set that down. Let's address the bracket. All right, now for a bracket, what I've done, you can buy these universal brackets. The end on this is gonna be a lot longer, like maybe another six inches or so. All you have to do is get a hacksaw, cut off the end, drill in a new hole. You've got a slotted edge here. You can see some bite marks from a vise, but uh, that will fit in to the same location as the original. So now let's take that off, fit in our new bracket. Now one video where I don't get my power ratchet out, and all of the bolts are fighting me. belt on, make sure it goes over all of the pulleys. There's the water pump, crank, and some of those. there we go. Make sure to pull really hard on your fingernails, that's always very important. Approximate where it's supposed to be. Finish tightening your nut on the bottom. This is usually a lot easier to do, but I'm trying to stay out of the way for the camera here. A little bit tight. Oh, right, and of course you need to tighten the one around the water pump housing as well. Verify that the pulleys still look reasonably straight, that your alternator's not twisted, although it shouldn't be, that everything's good and tight, and then we could talk about wiring. Now, if you remember, we've got this plug, there are two big brown wires, and according to the wiring diagram, these are connected uh, at a plug in the wiring harness, you've got your indicator wire. Uh, it's the brown one with the yellow stripes. So indicator is going to go on one terminal here. There's going to be a positive 12 volts on the one uh, next to it. So as you're looking at this alternator anyway from the back, uh, the indicator will be on the left and the 12 volts will be on the right. And then you're going to have a positive wire uh, for the output of the alternator. It's going to go on this lug on the back. So what we can do is remove these from the plug. Okay, so there's a tab that you're going to want to hold down on one end. And on the other end, you can push the terminal through. See? Tab on one side, hold that down, push the terminal from the other end. be able to put these back on later if I wanted to. You can always re-solder uh, this connection. Technically, I guess that's just a crimp connection, but you can always add a little solder on top of it. Uh, but just snip the wire kind of close. You want a fresh bit to work with anyway. Save the terminals. Because you may want to use that later. 
get a new piece of wire on the end of all of these. Again, cannot stress enough, your power should not be on when you're doing this. Keep the battery disconnected. Okay, so our alternator is usually going to come with a plug like this too. Uh, so just make sure you look at the wiring diagram for the plug and then connect the right wires to the correct places. Uh, in my case, this white wire goes to the indicator wire and that's what's going to allow it to plug in here. I'm going to solder these. The best part about soldering is that all you need to do is just, well, I mean, heat it up again. You'll, you'll unsolder the connection, pull it off, start again. Uh, if you're not great at soldering, I guess use a crimp connection, but they, they kind of suck. It's not going to be good long term. Uh, so if you, if you don't know how to solder, go find a YouTube video. I'm not going to show you me doing it because I'm also not terrific at soldering. So I don't want to show you an improper technique or anything like that. So, uh, but it is a better way to make a good connection. So uh, let's do that. I'll show you once I'm ready to wire it up. Connections put together. Plug. socket or a wrench to tighten the output bolt. Don't over tighten it, you'll break the alternator. In this case it's a 10 mil. Make sure the plug is secure. Put your spark plug lead back on. Make sure you don't have any metal out of place or tools that you left on top of the engine block that'll fall off. And it looks like we are ready to test this. Okay. Step one is to reconnect your battery and make sure that nothing starts smoking all of a sudden. Nothing getting excessively hot, so I'd say that that looks pretty good. Let's open the garage door, start the car, see what happens. Okay guys, that's it. We got back, the alternator was charging right where it was supposed to be, 14 volts and change. Uh, went for a fairly long drive, higher RPMs, didn't go above that, uh, honestly didn't really go below that either, so uh, it's exactly what we wanted it to do. So I'll probably make another video about alternators, so subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, keep an eye out for it. Uh, my plan is to kind of give you the basics on how to test it and make sure that it's working. Uh, and also maybe to find out what's wrong with it if it's not. Uh, oftentimes the parts that go bad in these things are about 20 or $30. And so if you want to keep the original alternator but just make it work, you can do it pretty inexpensively. As a matter of fact, that's what I would have done, but I'm still waiting another four weeks because I have a, an alternator that wasn't original to the car, which means I can't go to the usual suppliers to get it. So I'm on a apparently a waiting list. It's coming from abroad and may or may not work when I get the part. So I thought it would probably be safer to just put in the different alternator like I did. But as you can see, everything worked fine. We went for a drive. Happy to be back on the road and we'll see you next time. Let us know if you have questions in the comments below. And once again, subscribe to the channel. And if you already do, thanks very much. It does help. Take care.